Hello everyone, welcome to another virtual story time with Bay County Library System. My name is Miss Dina and I'm a children's librarian at Wirt Public Library in Bay City, Michigan. And I am here to share with you a story time all about monsters. So we're going to have some spooky scary stories, maybe some not so scary st songs and stories and rhymes that we will enjoy today. So we'll take a look at some of our monsters later. Why don't we get started by singing our hello song. We always sing hello friends at the beginning of my story times. So we say hello like this in sign language with a salute like that and then we say friends with our fingers. We take one friend on this finger and one friend on this finger and they give each other a hug just like that. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Will you sing it with me one more time? Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Very good. All right, next, why don't we take out our hands and we will do open, shut them. Are you ready? Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Fold them in your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, crawl them. Creep them, crawl them right up to your chin. Open wide your little mouth. Say, ah, but do not let them in. Open. Open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, fold them in your lap, lap, lap. Very good. All right, I mentioned that we were going to be doing a spooky, scary monster story time today. So my very first story is a spooky, scary story that I'm going to share that's right over here called In a Dark, Dark Wood. This one is a little bit spooky, but it's a little bit fun too. So it goes like this. In a dark, dark wood, there was a dark, dark house. And in the dark, dark house, there was a dark, dark room. And in the dark, dark room, there was a dark, dark cupboard. And in the dark, dark cupboard, there was a dark, dark box. And in the dark, dark box, there was a... A spider! Ah! I know a song about a spider that we can sing that's not spooky at all. Do you know the itsy bitsy spider? Why don't we do that one together right now? We can do our hands like this and make our itsy bitsy spider. You ready? The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain and the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Very good. Is this an itsy bitsy spider or is it a great big spider? I don't know. It doesn't look so itsy bitsy to me. So why don't we do it again? We're going to do the great big spider and we can make great big hand movements with this one. Are you ready? The great big spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain and the great big spider went up the spout again. Very good. All right, why don't we do it one more time and you can see if you can help me tell the story again. Maybe you can recognize some of the pictures. We're going to see this a few times throughout our story time today. So in a dark, dark wood, there was a dark, dark house. And in the dark, dark house, there was a dark, dark room. And in the dark, dark room, there was a dark, dark cupboard. And in the dark, dark cupboard, there was a dark, dark box. 
And in the dark, dark box, there was a... A book! A book? Why don't we take a look at our book for today? My book that I brought is called Spike. The Mixed Up Monster, and this book is by Susan Hood with pictures by Melissa Sweet. And this book is presented with permission from Simon & Schuster, Spike the Mixed Up Monster. And this book is really special because it has some Spanish words that are right in the story. And if you'd like to take a look, I'll hold the page up. You could pause it if you'd like to know what some of these Spanish words are before we get started. And you could pause the video for just a moment and take a look at those. Grown-ups can take a look at those with their child. Or we can look at them again at the end. So Spike, the mixed up monster. Spike was a monster, or so he thought. He had a slithery tail. He had a spiky crown. And he had stumpy teeth. See, said Spike, I'm a monster, all right. He's pretty sure he's a monster. Spike spent hours practicing his monster moves. Maybe you can try these monster moves along with Spike. He'd swoosh that tail. He'd shake those spikes. And he'd bear those teeth. And he'd splish, splash, splatter, and splutter. Oh no, he's a water monster. There was just one little problem. What do you think the little problem is? Uh-oh, where did Spike go? <gasps> where did he go? Uh-oh, there's the little problem. Spike was no bigger than a lily pad. So no one was afraid of Spike. Oh no, he's so tiny. Look at him. Aw, my funny little fish face, quacked El Pato. Spike shook his spikes. Ah, amigo, said El Armadillo. You're cuter than a bug's behind. Spike swished his tail. Ay, caramba, you're almost as adorable as I am, said El Campagnol. So all the animals just thought he was so cute. Not scary at all. So Spike bared his teeth. Is that pretty scary? Oh, he has such a sweet smile, everyone agreed. Spike's crown of spikes drooped as he sank beneath the water, settling into the scum at the bottom of the lake. I'm a horrible monster, he thought. A no good, horrible monster. Oh, poor Spike. But then, early one misty morning, a traveler appeared by the lake. A monster. A real monster. Uh-oh, what kind of monster is it? A Gila monster! Oh no! He wore a black mask and flicked a black tongue. Here was a monster as tough as they come. Yikes. That's a scary monster, isn't it? Looks much bigger than Spike. Its teeth, he's baring his teeth and they're much sharper than Spike's. Oh no. One look and the animals knew just what to do? El monstruo, quick, quacked El Pato. Flap and fly, flap and fly. El monstruo, said El Armadillo. Dig and hide, dig and hide. El monstruo, said El Campagnol. Run inside, run inside. Only Spike was left to face El monstruo. Oh, no. Do you think Spike's going to scare that monster away? He knew what to do. His monster moves. He shook his spikes, and he swooshed his tail, and he bared his teeth, and splished, and splashed, and splattered, and spluttered. El Monstro didn't make a, make a move. He didn't make a sound. He just stopped and stared. 
Look at Spike. What's Spike doing? Do you think Spike's pretty happy because maybe he scared the monster away? He's just smiling away. Did I scare you? asked Spike. Scare me? No, El Monstruo laughed. It's just that no one has ever smiled at me before. Oh, said Spike. His crown of spikes drooped as he dropped back down into the water. Oh, no. Wait, cried El Monstro. Wait, amigo, I need your help. I was headed for my cousin's fiesta, but I took a siesta. He fell asleep. But now I'm lost. Everyone runs away from me, so I have no one to ask for help. Well, I can help you, said Spike. And he flashed his fellow monster a big, friendly monster grin as he pointed out the correct path. Oh. Gracias, amigo, said El Monstruo, returning Spike's smile. Amigo, said Spike. That means friend. Amigo. De nada, mi amigo. Adios. Thank you, my friend. Goodbye. Adios, amigo, said El Monstruo. See you next time. And he was on his way. Slowly and carefully, El Pato, El Armadillo, and El Campagnol came out of their hiding places. You saved us, quacked El Pato. How did you do it? asked El Armadillo. How do you ta how did you tame the monster? asked El Campagnol. And what did Spike say? Spike just smiled. And that's the end. So the back of this book, I showed you before that there are some, there's a, a page that tells you all of the Spanish words that were in this story, which we talked about some of them, but there are also some pages that are about Spike and his amigos, Spike and his friends. So Spike isn't really a monster, but he is real. He's a real animal called an axolotl, a special kind of salamander that can be found in Mexico. Axolotls range in size from 7 to 14 inches long, with the average being between 9 and 10 inches, so not very big. The name axolotl comes from the native Aztec language and means water monstrosity, water twin, water sprite, or water dog after the Aztec god axolotl. Some call the axolotl a Mexican walking fish. The Japanese people call it a whooper looper. That's kind of silly. So there's some information about Spike the axolotl. And there's some other information about the other animals that we saw. So let's take a look at them. So remember we said we saw El Monstruo, and that's a Gila monster, a two-foot-long poisonous lizard. So there's our Gila monster. That was our that was El Monstruo that we saw. There's lots of legends about Gila monster. The Gila monster has gotten a bad rap, and not just because of its dangerous bite. Thanks to legend and superstition, the Gila monster has been falsely accused of spitting venom, leaping high in the air, and killing people and animals with its foul breath, even ridding itself of waste through its mouth. But in truth, the Gila monster is a slow-moving, solitary animal that lives in the desert, such as the southwestern United States and northern Mexico. It does have a, ta a painful bite, but it tends to shy away from humans and other animals, spending most of its time underground. So that's the Gila monster. And then we also met El Campanol, which is a Mexican vole, which is kind of like a mouse. So there's our El Campanol. We also had... El Pato, what was El Pato? El Pato was a kind of a duck, a cinnamon teal duck, which weighs less than a pound and is about 16 inches long. It's among the smallest ducks. And the other animal that we saw was El Armadillo, or a nine-banded armadillo, which is about the size of a large house cat. So if you were to get this book out from the library, you could read all about all of those different animals in the back of the book, Spike the Mixed Up Monster.
So why don't we go back into the dark, dark woods and see what else we might be able to find. In a dark, dark wood, there was a dark, dark house. And in the dark, dark house, there was a dark, dark room. And in the dark, dark room, there was a dark, dark cupboard. And in the dark, dark cupboard, there was a dark, dark box. And in the dark, dark box, there was a, a cupcake. Is a cupcake scary? No, a cupcake's not scary. Why don't we do it one more time? Maybe we'll find something scary the next time when we go back into the dark, dark wood. Are we ready? In a dark, dark wood, there was a dark, dark house. And in the dark, dark house, there was a dark, dark room. And in the dark, dark room, there was a dark, dark cupboard. And in the dark, dark cupboard, there was a dark, dark box. And in the dark, dark box, there was a, a pizza. So a piece of pizza isn't that scary, and neither is our next rhyme, which is about a monster. But this isn't a monster who is very scary. This is about a number monster. So I brought my number monster with me today. Here he is. There's our number monster. And we're going to put some numbers up on our board and see if we can count with our friend, the number monster. What numbers do we see here? Number monster, what numbers do you see? We see one, two... Three, four. Very good. So one, two, three, and four over on our board. So I have a rhyme about a number monster. And this number monster loves to learn to count and also loves to eat numbers. This is a hungry number monster. So we're going to count to 20 with this rhyme. And we're also going to talk about the days of the week in this rhyme. So you might be watching this video on a Monday morning because that's when I'm going to put it up on the library's Facebook page. But I'm actually filming this on a Friday afternoon. So it might be a different day that you're watching this video. And that's all right, too. So maybe we can see what day of the week that we're on as we're doing our number rhyme. But we're going to start on Monday day with our rhyme. So this is how my rhyme goes. Number monster wanted to count so he could always know the amount. On Monday, he ate one, two, three, four. So let's eat one, two, three, four. But then he wanted to count some more. So on Tuesday, he ate five, six, Seven, eight, learning to count is really great. Wednesday, he feasted on nine and ten. He could hardly wait to eat again. Thursday, 11, 12, 13 went down. Then he took a walk to town. There he goes. Friday were 14, 15, and 16. Those were the largest numbers he'd ever seen. Saturday, 17, 18, and 19 went into his tummy. Oh, those numbers, numbers are just so yummy. Yes, they are. But on Sunday, 20 was all he could do. He said, I'm stuffed with numbers. It's true. So full of numbers, 1 through 20. So 
Bye, number monster. We'll see you next time. All right, I have another story about another monster, and we're gonna bring out another puppet friend for this one. So here's our here's our monster. Is that a monster? I don't know, this kind of just looks like a funny green glove. Hmm, there's no monster here. So maybe we can build our monster together. Maybe we know this story already. This is called Go Away, Big Green Monster. So let's see if we can build our monster and then we can scare the monster away. Are we ready? So here's Big Green Monster. Big Green Monster has two big yellow eyes. Oh, here's some eyes. Two big yellow eyes. Big green monster has a long bluish greenish nose and a big red mouth with sharp white teeth. Uh oh, he's starting to look more like a monster now, isn't he? He has two little squiggly ears. Here's where the ears go over there and scraggly purple hair. There's our big green monster, but you don't scare me. So now we're gonna tell the monster to go away. So can you help me tell the monster to go away? Let's practice. We're gonna say it nice and loud. <gasps> go away, scraggly purple hair. Oop, there goes our scraggly purple hair. Go away, two little squiggly ears. Oh, there goes one, and there goes the other. Go away, long, bluish, greenish nose. Oh, there it goes. Uh-oh, now he just looks kind of silly. Go away, big red mouth. Go away, sharp white teeth. Uh-oh. Go away, two yellow eyes. And go away. Big green monster, <gasps> and don't come back until I say so. So we can see our big green monster the next time. If you want to see that story again, if you want to tell big green monster to come back, that is from a book by Ed Emberley, and we have it here at the library, um, and you can check it out. All right, my friends, it's time to go back into the dark, dark wood and see if there's one more thing that we can find hiding in a box. And this time, why don't you see if you can say what we're going to see next before I do. In a dark, dark wood, there was a dark, dark house. And in the dark dark house. There was a dark, dark room. And in the dark, dark room, there was a dark, dark cupboard. And in the dark, dark cupboard, there was a dark, dark box. And in the dark, dark box, there was uh, banana! All right, so bananas were a really silly thing to find in our box in our dark, dark wood. So why don't we do a silly rhyme about some bananas? This is one of my favorite songs to do at story time. It's called Bananas Unite, and we're going to have to pretend to be bananas. Are you ready to pretend to be a banana? We're all going to stand up, and we're going to do some wiggling and some moving and some dancing around, and we're going to pretend to be bananas. So I'm going to move this back a little bit. I'm going to stand up so that you can see me, and I'm going to pretend to be a banana. Are you ready? So we're going to do like this. We're going to go, bananas unite. So we're going to pretend to be bananas. Kind of look like a banana now, right? Sort of. So first, when we get our bananas, we peel them. So first we peel. Bananas, peel, peel, bananas. Peel, bananas, peel, peel, bananas. Then chop, bananas, chop, chop, bananas. Chop, bananas, chop, chop, bananas. Then mash, bananas, mash, mash, bananas. Mash, bananas, mash, mash, bananas. Then you eat. Bananas, eat, eat, bananas. Eat, bananas, eat, eat, bananas. Then you go bananas. So how do we go bananas? We dance all around. I'm gonna have some monster friends help me go bananas. 
So we go bananas, go, go bananas, go bananas, go, go bananas. Good job. All right, friends, we are just about out of time, so we will sing our goodbye song. It's just like our hello song, which was hello, friends, except now we're going to wave goodbye like this and say goodbye, friends. All right? Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for joining me today.